So this week, we wanted to show you how to make dumplings in the northern Chinese style. These dumplings are delicious and a bit heftier than some dumplings you might be used to. We'll show you three fillings today. First we'll do pork with leek, then beef with fennel, and finally egg with jiu cai. But before we get into it, let's show you how to make some dumpling skins. To make the wrappers, you'll need flour. This is dumpling flour. It's about halfway between bread flour and all-purpose, with a protein content of 12.8%. You could use bread flour if yours clocks in at something similar, or half bread and half AP if it's a sturdier one. So to 500 grams of flour, add in a half teaspoon salt and crack an egg into it. In a stand mixer on speed one, let those combine and slowly drizzle in 200 grams hot boiled water into the dough. This hot water cooks the gluten in the dough to make things stretchier when you're rolling. Leave that on speed one for eight minutes. And if you don't have a stand mixer, you can obviously knead by hand too. Just knead for a similar eight to 10 minutes until you've got a smooth dough like this. Now toss that in a plastic bag to prevent it drying out and rest for at least a half an hour and up to overnight. Now, the basic idea for meat fillings is to have two thirds lean meats, which will combine with a seasoned water mixture and one third fats, two thirds of which being pork fat here and one third being a seasoned oil mixture. To make the seasoned water, take about an inch and a half of ginger and pound it till relatively pasty. Then add a half teaspoon Sichuan peppercorn and six tablespoons of hot boiled water. Let that soak for at least 10 minutes, strain, and set it aside to cool completely. For the oil, heat six tablespoons of peanut oil over medium low flame. Add in a few small slices of leek and four star anise. Let those cook for about two minutes. Toss in a tablespoon of fennel seed and cook for another two minutes. Strain and set that aside to cool completely. For the leek accoutrement, it's one part leek to nine parts filling, so here about 50 grams. We uh, used a touch extra because I really like leek, but either way, just get it into a dice. Now for our pork. This cuts from the ham of the pig, 315 grams lean and 135 grams fat. So take the fat and get it into a dice. You could use pork belly here too. We're just using this cut because it's much easier to split out the fat. Now cut your lean into chunks and just start chopping it. Periodically fold the meat over itself to help arrive at a pasty consistency. Two knives make quick work of this, but you could also use one It'll be ready to go once you're at about this texture. So now toss that lean in a bowl and add in one teaspoon salt, one teaspoon sugar, a half teaspoon chicken bouillon powder, a quarter teaspoon white pepper powder, one tablespoon light soy sauce, and a half tablespoon liaojiu, AKA Shaoxing wine. Give that a mix, stirring in one direction only, and add in your seasoned water mixture one tablespoon at a time. What we're doing here is developing the myosin in the meat so that our dumpling is a stickier, more uniform whole instead of some sort of hamburger helper in a dumpling. Oil gets in the way of that process, which is why we separated those out. After about five to 10 minutes of stirring, this should be pretty sticky. So toss in your leek, the fat, and the seasoned oil. Fold that all in and we can wrap some dumplings. Now take your well-rested dough and punch a hole in it. Get that into a big ring to get it all even, then cut it open. Roll it a touch thinner, then slice your dough, twisting after each cut to help keep a relatively circular shape. We're doing 20 grams in each slice, which is really quite large. If you want your dumplings smaller, just aim for 10 to 15. Now press down on your dough pieces working through them. To roll the wrapper, what you'll do is place your rolling pin on the board itself. Roll inwards, then use a bit of force when you're pulling it out. Twist and do the same. This motion makes the outside of the dumpling thinner than the inside, allowing you to hold a bigger amount of filling. Once those are rolled up, you can fill them up. So we're doing about a tablespoon and a half of filling here for these large dumplings. For a basic style, place the filling in the dumpling, then pull the center up and press together. Take one side and fold it inward, press everything closed, and do the same with the other side. Now add a pleat and another pleat, then put the dumpling in between your two thumbs, pressing with force down and slightly inward. These are good to go, but let's show you how to do the other fillings before we boil them up.
So beef and fennel is basically exactly the same. First off, make that same ginger peppercorn water and the same seasoned oil. For the fennel, slice off the stems, then pick the leaves. We want about 50 grams of leaves total. Just give them a good rinse and let that dry as we're prepping the beef. Now, to contradict everything that I've ever said on this channel before, we're using some pre-ground beef, 80-20 chuck, about 400 grams. Reason being mostly that beef chuck's a nightmare to chop in the same way as pork, but because we're using something pre-minced, we'll be pounding this with the back of the knife instead of the front. Same sort of motion, it'll take a bit, about five minutes, before this gets relatively pasty. Now, because we're using 80-20 chuck, we're adding 55 grams of beef fat to get things up to ratio. Same deal as the pork fat, just get into a fine dice and set aside. Same seasoning mix as before, same stirring process as before. Because we've got that fat in the chuck, things will be a little bit more work to get sticky. Just work through it and you can move on once you see little streaks on the side of the bowl. Now add in the fennel, the fat, and the oil, fold those in, and this is ready to wrap. Same deal as before, quick review, fold up, seal, fold in on one side, seal, fold in on the other side, seal, give it a couple pleats, then hold between your thumbs and press with force to finish the job. So now, let's take a step back and show you how to make eggs with jiu tsai. Jiu tsai is also called Chinese chives and just goes great with egg. We're using 350 grams of jiu tsai here. Cut off those hard ends and chop off the ugly bits on the other side. Jiu tsai is usually quite dirty as sold, so let those soak in water for about 10 minutes. Then drain out the dirt, then grab the jiu tsai and slam it down into your bowl of water to clean. Keep doing that till the water runs clear, then set those in a strainer to dry out completely, or you could use a salad spinner if you're in a rush. Once those are totally dry, slice them up as thin as you can reasonably get them. Toss in a bowl, then add in a quarter teaspoon baking soda, a tablespoon of peanut oil, and a tablespoon of toasted sesame oil. The purpose of the baking soda is so that the jiu tsai maintains a vibrant green color through cooking. Mix well and set aside. For the egg, we'll use four medium. Crack them open, then add a tablespoon liaojiu wine. Beat the eggs thoroughly, and now we'll fry them. As always, first, Lang Yao. Get that wok piping hot, shut off the heat, add in your oil, here a bit extra, about four tablespoons, and give it a swirl to get a nice nonstick surface. Heat on medium now. Get the oil up till bubbles start to form around a pair of chopsticks. Add in the egg, it'll puff really nicely, and turn. Let it set, turn again, and once it's mostly done, shut off the heat and give those a good scramble. Eggs out, and we'll combine these with the jiu tsai at the last possible second. Notice that we're seasoning this mix basically right before we wrap them. Add in a teaspoon salt and a half teaspoon chicken bouillon powder, then mix in the eggs. Reason being that the salt will cause the jiu tsai to release moisture. So as soon as this is in, the shot clock's running. Wrap up your dumplings, and let's show you how to cook these. In a large walker nonstick pot, Add in a half teaspoon salt and get it up to a boil. Carefully add in the dumplings, making sure that they don't stick to the bottom else they'll break. Cover, bring to a boil, then add in some cool water to bring it back down. Once it's at a boil again, add in some water again. Adding the water is to ensure that the boil is not so rapid as to break apart the dumpling. We'll do this three times till all the dumplings are floating, take them out, and your dumplings are done. Eat them hot and fresh with some dark Chinese vinegar as a dipping sauce. So dumplings freeze really well. When you do that, just lay them out separately with about half an inch uh, space between them. And when they're frozen and hard up, just put them in a Ziploc bag and they keep for very long. Now, when you want to cook them, you don't need to thaw or anything. Just toss them in boiling water. It's totally the same. It may just take a little bit longer. So check out the red link in the description box for detailed recipe. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.